Want to make South Park animations that look like they came right from the show? Well, I'm going to show you how I do it. Hey guys, Mod Sneko here. Welcome to Cat Plan. For this tutorial, I'm using Adobe Animate CC. Link in description. However, this program is basically just an improved version of the other Adobe Flash programs, so this tutorial works for those versions as well. Now, let's get started. Alright, so when you open Flash or Adobe Animate, you're going to get a screen like this. It'll have you put in all the information you need if you're getting a new file. You'll have your recent files here, so if you've already created like an animation type file or whatever. Or you can press open and uh, search through your files here if it doesn't appear in recent. So, I suggest 1920 by 1080 for the size, because that makes it so it's high definition for YouTube, and if that's where you're planning on posting it, then yeah, that's the best way to go. Uh, I've been going at 30 FPS, uh, you can go lower than that, but uh, 30 FPS seems to be pretty solid for the most part. So, uh, 1920 by 1080, go ahead and create, and you'll come onto this screen. You'll have your canvas right here, which you could either make white or a different color. The way to make it a different color is you go over here to the right and it'll say stage. And then this is in the properties tab, by the way, but it'll say stage You can click that. And usually what I'll do for this is just make it like a light blue. Uh, this is just so that if you have some sort of white background or something, uh, you just want to make sure that you can actually see what's this stage and what's the picture. So just just something extra to do and it's, uh, it's really based on preference anyway. So if we're going to make a South Park animation, we need to get South Park characters. Even if you're using your own character, you do want to make sure that you get the body and base correct. So you can do, go over to Google. And I got a picture of Stan and Clyde, because I'm going to be using them for my examples. So, you can actually copy image to put it in here, or you can get it from your files. So, click anywhere on here, whatever, uh, Control V, and you got Stan in there. I'm going to move him over. Uh, and then, like, if you don't want to copy file, you want to keep it for later, uh, you save Clyde to your computer, import to stage. Uh, and then Clyde. So the import to library thing is uh, you have your library here where it'll say which files you have. I put in Stan and Clyde, so those will show up. But uh, if you're wanting to import it to library, it'll just go directly there and not show up on the canvas. So you lock this because this is basically going to be our, uh, I'll just say background. These are just the reference lit the references. But we are going to be tracing these. So uh, a lot of people call this process rigging. So rather than saying tracing, I'll say rigging. It also sounds like less of a dirty term since tracing can often be seen as bad. So let's get our circle tool here because we're going to start with the head. Uh, Stan and Clyde are probably the best examples to do for this because aside from this little band here on his hat, Stan, for the most part, has uh, just his whole head showing, and then Clyde has the head but shows uh, without the hat. So get this tool. I usually use bright pink, uh, as most of the time that color is not used by what I'm tracing. However, if it is, obviously choose a different color. This is just for your tracing. Fill color here. Uh, most likely you're going to want to use this little slash here. That just means that there's no color fill when you're doing this. So then you go ahead, hold down the right mouse, click and drag to make the head. So obviously, as you can see, this is not going exactly how I need it to. So once I let go of that, I can use this free transform tool here. Highlight this whole thing and then uh, make it bigger. So if you hold down shift while doing this, it'll make it so all the proportions stay the same on the circle. But we do want to make it match, so just do what we can in this case really to, to basically make it match. Uh, do it out this way. That is uh, pretty much correct. Maybe just a tiniest little bit like this. 
Yeah, because you want a little headroom anyway, since uh, you don't want Stan's head to be appearing through the hat. So I'd say that this is pretty much perfect. Now, it may be a little hard to see this circle right now, so uh, we can hide this bottom layer here by using the eyeball. So now you can see this thing here perfectly and click it, see it better. So what you're going to be doing now is uh, using the eyedropper tool. Pull down shift and click on the color you want. And as you can see, it went ahead and changed both of these colors. This one with the pencil here is the actual line art color. And this one here is the bucket fill color. So if I did the uh, eyedropper tool and just clicked, it would only make the fill color this color. So that's why it's usually best just to hold shift. That way you can get them both at the same time. So then you use the paint bucket tool, fill it in, and then go ahead to the uh, ink bottle tool, fill that in. All right, so the next thing you do is either use the selection tool, highlight this whole circle, or if this is the only thing on the layer, you can also just click the layer and it'll select everything that's on it. And then you press F8, or you can go to modify and convert to symbol. Basically, we are just converting this into a symbol, and symbols are going to be your best friend when it comes to this, so get used to them. You need to name it something unique, because nothing can be the same name, so I'm going to say like Head001. I say 001 because uh, if you do like more than 10, it'll be actually in numerical order instead of 1, 10, 2, whatever. Uh, so that's just the way I do it, but you can do it whatever way you want. Um, go ahead and make the registration in the middle. Uh, I haven't found this part mattering too much anyway, but uh, when it comes to what type you're choosing, the uh, graphic seems to be the best way to go unless you are um, doing effects on it. So if you're doing like a blur effect or like making it glow or uh, having a shadow or anything like that, then you have to make it a movie clip. If you just want a, uh, a very high quality symbol, then you do a graphic. The only time you do a button is if you're making a flash game, so don't even worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a graphic. Press okay. And now it works. Got this in here. Let's say that for whatever reason, uh, I don't like how this head came out. Maybe I wanna change the color. Uh, you can go ahead and double click it click away that way the stuff isn't selected and then you can do whatever you want with it you can even take away the color on it if you wanted so uh, and then to get out of that you either double click anywhere or you press this area right here just to get back to it okay so what I usually do is when I'm creating these I make three layers I make the background layer the tracing layer and then the finished layer so now that I'm done with this head, what I would do is Control X, that's cut, go up to the finish layer, make sure I click that, and then Control Shift V, that is paste in place. And if you can't remember a lot of these shortcuts, you can always go to edit and you see a lot of these here. So you have cut, you have copy, you have paste in center, paste in place, uh, and different things like that, and then again with modify and then convert to symbols so but it will be nice if you can learn all these shortcuts because it'll make it go much faster so if I want to do more on Stan I don't want this head in the way so I can go ahead and hide it Woo. all right so as I said with splitting things up even when you do his hat you do want to make sure you do the brim the actual hat and the puffball separate you don't have to go as far as to make like it each individual puffball thing a symbol because that would be pretty excessive so uh, <clears throat> but just making the puffball itself a separate symbol that's good enough to do so obviously you can't use the circle tool on the rest of these so we're gonna go ahead and use the jacket as an example so go down to tracing because you're on this layer since it has the X here you can see or like sorry the not symbol thing 
Uh, that means you can't trace on this layer. If you click on it, it'll even say it's locked or hidden. Would you like to unlock and show? No, just go down to the correct layer. So I can't tell you how many times I've been on the wrong layer. It, it definitely happens. So I'm going to go ahead and get my ink bottle thingy. Have that be pink. And let's zoom in because this is going to require a lot of work. Now, you're going to be using this line tool a lot when it comes to rigging. Like for some of the things you can do the circle tool or maybe even like the rectangle tool. But for the most part, you're just going to be using this line tool. So go ahead, start at this corner, click, hold, drag all the way to that corner. And then you switch go to your uh, selection tool and go about in the center, click, hold, drag, and make it so it goes right up there. And since I went a little over there, you can see, uh, just go ahead, go to the corner, wait until it has that little corner icon there, click, drag, whoop, there you go. And now I'm seeing that the pink is a little bit too much matching. So let me see if I can get something that does better. White actually does relatively good. So I think I'll stick with white on that one. All right. So then what you're wanting to do is uh, go ahead. Like it doesn't matter that you're doing this across his face because this is going to be layered under him anyway. So you want to get it all the way across to here because you do need to close up these symbols. That way you're able to actually color them in. So again, go from the corner, go to here, go ahead to this, click, drag, do this. And then uh, you just keep going until you get the whole thing done. So you can see that there's varying thicknesses here. So like for example, with this part right here, this is a bit too thin for this. So what you can then do is, uh, let's just select this, but you can also do it just for your line tool in general. Uh, you click on it and you'll get properties here for the line tool. Uh, you have a size thing here. I don't know how big it is. I'm going to guess three. I'm not sure if that's the correct one or not, but let's see if I change this to three, would it look about the same? Whoops, not 300, 3.0, whatever. Uh, that's actually still not big enough. So you can try five. Just basically keep trying until you get it to the amount that it needs to be. Wow, this is a big sucker apparently. Okay, so seven looks good enough. Um, and then go ahead, change it back to one. I do recommend one point as the default, but uh, that could be up to personal preference, honestly. So again, you just keep tracing all the way around. Uh, if you get something like this, you may not want to go all the way across. Just do it in smaller increments. But this gives you the basic jacket body that you get with South Park style. All right, now once you've finished, uh, we're going to make these separate again. Um, but we do have these right here. We might as well make them part of the symbol as well. So once again, since we're using circle tool, going to make it so this is not filled in so we can see what we're doing. Scroll in, go ahead and make that. Oh, I forgot that was still on five. I mean, that may still work anyway, but let me go to one. And then because I don't want to keep making these and chance them being slightly different, I'll just highlight this. Control C or edit copy. Control V, edit paste. And then go ahead and and drag them over to the places that they need to be. All right, awesome. Now, since this whole thing's done, again, use the paint bucket, color it in. And now, uh, here's, here's a major thing. So what I did before with the skin and the ink bottle was that I clicked right in the middle. And when I did that, the whole thing filled out. However, if I do it with this, then all my lines went away and that's not what I want. So, you would just be clicking the outer edges to get that. And then you would go to the ink thing and make it black to do this part. However, since, uh, since we did this with, I believe it was seven stroke, we do want to make sure that we change that back to seven stroke, this number back to five. And I think I did five with these as well. 
though that looks kind of big, so I could be wrong. So if you want to see what's below it, make sure you're doing it right. Again, use the eyeball. Yep, that is way too big, so I must have used the one. So again, ink bottle, one point stroke, and just get the shrunk down. And for whatever reason, that didn't color in. Oh, because I didn't color it in. I'm a dumb. So yeah, don't don't forget to uh, to color it in. <laughs> All right, perfect. And if this unevenness bugs you, then just go ahead, drag this corner, and it'll go right up there. And it snapped in place. You could tell that it was uh, even how it needed to be. So. Although I think I threw this out of place. There we go. Alright. So again, F8. Let's say Stan Jacket 001. In case there's other ones I need to make. Keep that a graphic. Control X. Put it on the finish layer. Control Shift V. Alright, so now you see that his jacket's kind of on top of his head. So what you want to do while this is selected is Control and Down Arrow. And then it looks weird, but that's because it's showing the background too. So we can also see that this isn't completely uh, how it needs to be. So we can actually edit this and let's just have it like that. We can go ahead and check it, make sure that that looks right. Yeah, that, that pretty much looks right. So. Uh, what I did there was layering, so made sure that this went below the head. And another way you can do layering is also modify, arrange, and then bring to front, bring forward, bring send backward, send back, whatever. Um, and you could see the shortcuts for those as well. So another thought you all may be having is why am I not using the construction paper look? Well. If you want to put this in your animation, you definitely can. But from what I've seen in my own animations, it doesn't seem to be too noticeable that I don't use the construction paper. The only reason I don't use it is because it seems that the program kind of slows down when you have too many image files, and you would have to use an image file to get this construction paper look. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, maybe there is a way to uh, get a construction paper type look in Flash without using an image file or bitmap file, but as far as I know, that's what it does. However, if you do want to do this, I will show you how. So we're going to go back to our tracing layer and we're going to get a, uh, like you could trace this exactly like, wow, that pink looks awful just blends right in totally took the words out of my mouth of the oh barely ever has the pink looking color so i'm going to do an awful job of tracing clyde's hair right here just to show a quick example i'm not going to trace the whole hair because his hair is freaking insane i'm just going to take a corner of this really so let's say that you trace the whole thing uh let me make sure that it's all within the lines here and this is actually something I found out how to do on my own after a bit it's not really basic knowledge from what I've seen so what you do here is uh, you don't even make this a symbol like you could make it a symbol if you want it to be a template like for example this jacket here because uh, you may want to get uh, this texture here for the jacket alright so what you do is you go to the background layer unlock it Go to this image, control B or right click and break apart. So now what happens here is uh, you're actually able to put this in flash. So now you go back to your layer that has that little thing that I made, control X, go down to your background layer and control shift V. And now when you click on this, you can see that this right here has been isolated because it's been taken off by this. So you could actually delete this whole image in this case, and then you could delete all these layers, or sorry, delete this border to make it look like it's just the hair thing. And then boom, you have that construction paper look. 
So again, this is something you can use and you can look in your library and uh, well, it doesn't show it yet, but uh, it does. it is part of the Clyde Donovan bitmap or PNG. So I guess that if you use the PNGs very sparingly, you may be able to use this for your construction paper look. Tell me in the comments section, do you think that I should try doing the construction paper look rather than just doing the uh, pasted color like I've been doing? Because I'll show you in a sec, updating the files isn't too, too hard. So that's a good thing at least. Obviously I can't update it for my past animations, but for any future ones. So just let me know on that. But you do the same thing for this. So go ahead, highlight it, uh, F8, and then say Clyde hair piece, since that's not the full thing. All right. And then that's its own symbol. You can go into it and edit it and whatever you want to do. Although there's really not much to edit. But yeah, that's how you do that if you wanted the construction paper look. The rigging is very important. You have to make everything a separate symbol. That way you can move things easier and in separate parts. Believe me, when I get to the animating part, you'll see why. You basically need to do the rigs first to be able to do everything with it. Let me show you what I mean. So usually what I do is I keep everything in their own folder. So like I have the backgrounds. Let me show you an example with these backgrounds here. So for example, we got this background right here, just the basic bus stop. However, I traced every bit of this with the rigging that you saw from before. So I, so while I can move this whole thing around, that's because I converted it into a whole symbol. But if I double click on it, everything is its own separate symbol. So you see the blue outline, that means have that there, have these trees here, have this here, and uh, the snow is even a separate one. So this is because let's say that I wanted to put a kid behind the bus stop, but in front of this tree. If I just have this as a whole flat image, I wouldn't be able to put the kid behind the bus stop because it's just a full image. So you need to be able to have these things separated to uh, have the layering that you need to do. There is a lot of rigging that goes into these South Park animations. Got all kinds of different body parts you should be making first off. That way you can use them as a template whenever you want to do any other ones. So I have all these different angles and such. Uh, a big one is the mouth. So you want to get your South Park mouths. I go ahead and do a guide of what each of the words probably are. I have Shelly's mouths right here. And then just, of course, the different eyes. And I do have blinking around here as well. Got the side mouths. And that, of course, is something that you're going to have to, uh, that you should be making ahead of time to make your life a whole lot easier. So one thing that I found out while doing these animations, which is amazing, like this helps so much, um, is this, the frame picker. So what I used to have to do before, and uh, you'd have to do the same with the mouth as well, is like I have the eyes there, and I would have to take these eyes, put them on top, make sure they're big enough. By the way, control, alt, s, change the size. You kind of guesstimate uh, 150, no, that's too big. All right, let's try 125. Oh, that's too, uh, too small. And just trying different stuff like that. And then it's like, hopefully that's correct. And then you would have to do that on one frame and then take it away and then have that. However, now I have this. It's the same size. I don't have to worry about it. The blinking is at the press of a button. I have this thing. Oh, the eyes are closed. They're happy or high or something. Like all at the click of a button. And when I get into the actual animating tutorial, I'll be able to show you how it helps in the keyframe area as well. So the same with the mouths. I'll use Shelly's example here. Uh, I'm able to change the mouth and this helps so much for lip syncing because what I used to have to do is go back to previous frames of where the person was talking and find that exact mouth and it would just take so much time to scroll through and find, oh yeah, which one had the mouth there? I, I don't remember. So just being able to do this and just change the mouth like that 
is so, so good. I don't know if this is in Adobe Flash or not, but it is here and it's wonderful. Also, this program has autosave. For anyone who used to use Adobe Crash, yeah, autosave is amazing. This program doesn't seem to crash as much, but it still does. And when it does, you'll still get a recovery file. So hey, that's great. Now after finally making your character, preferably going ahead to making all the angles, you can find references online on how uh, the body parts are supposed to be, make each thing individual. So you, I made that a full symbol, but within it I have all the hands, uh, the jacket, this, that, everything like that. Yeah, there's a lot of rigging that needs to be done beforehand, but once that's done, you won't have to make it again. So let me show you a quick example of that. So going back to this, let's say that I wanted to put these parts on Clyde, but I don't want to have to like remake the circle and remake this jacket, whatever. So the head parts are already good. As far as I know, the South Park characters have like the same skin tone. I could be wrong though, let's check. Yeah, I don't really see it moving, and if it does change, it's really not that much of a difference. So the head's fine. You can use the head universally. So let's copy, paste, and put the head there. Okay, Clyde has a head. Awesome. But if we want to put this jacket here, we copy that. And Clyde's jacket is not brown. Also, if you want to see what you're doing here, and not just guesstimate, uh, you can go ahead and press this line thing here. And that'll make it so there's like a skeleton. So I guess Clyde's model was a little smaller. So you see this orange here. You can go ahead, click that, uh, control this, whatever, make it smaller. Let's try 70. No, nope, never mind. Try 90% smaller. Uh, that is awful. Okay, I am tired of doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shift click, drag it to where it needs to be. All right, cool, got it a basic proper size, but his jacket still is not red. Actually, Clyde's model here seems to be quite a bit different. There are some differences with this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and show you first off, let's get this back to this normal mode. Um, now you wanna be sure that you do this before editing any of these to be different, because this is how you're able to use the models over and over again. Click this. Uh, right click, duplicate symbol, and then you change its name. So with this, we're going to say Clyde Jacket. Now, when we do anything with it, nothing happens to this. However, if I were to not duplicate it, and now says Stan Jacket, if I do this and delete, now you see that Stan's jacket thing got the color deleted out of it too. So you have to be very careful about that. I've oftentimes made that mistake and it's just heartbreaking to make it. So again, let's duplicate that, make it Clyde's jacket. And then there are differences here. So let's make sure we get these differences right and go ahead and drag this over. Do this. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I, I apologize, guys. But since for whatever reason Clyde's model looks different, just want to go ahead and do that. Uh, in the future, I will also do a tutorial on just basically how to use this program. So that may help extend on this. However, I know that I'm going to have to put how to actually animate in a different video because rigging is very important. I have to reiterate that and there's so much that you can do with animating that if I add it to this it would probably be like an hour long video and no one would want to watch it. I mean people might want to watch it but it's kind of ridiculous. So, uh, so be sure to keep an eye out for that video in the future. All right, so then yeah, basically getting this right. All right, so now if you color pick Clyde's jacket. Oh no, it won't color in. What you gotta do? Make sure you double click on it. That's a problem I've had before where it's like, oh, it won't select. And that's because you gotta make sure that you're inside the symbol. It'll only color it if it's not a symbol yet. Otherwise you have to go inside the symbol to color it. Okay. And now we have Clyde's jacket. Again, let's layer that. Control down. Woo! 
All right, how's it look? And then again, just make sure you make every little part, do the lining here and everything with that. The rigging is long, it's tedious, it's annoying, but it definitely helps you in the long run. This is for backgrounds and for characters and any products or anything that you need. Once you get this rigging done, you can actually start animating. My advice, keep it in a separate file like I do. You got backgrounds, you got your parts, you got your characters. You can also do different scenes up here. I got work in progress and I got finished. Make a scene, do insert, scene. Go up here, there we go. Because then when you make a fresh file, you can just take the character from another one, have your clean library right here, and not have all this other stuff just gunking up your library. That would probably make the program just crash every time if you kept everything in one file with just different scenes. So then you can just uh, take your character. So let's take our um, part of a Clyde. Whoops. And then again, lock the background layer to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, take our part of a Clyde. Select all of it. All right, let's say that we want to make him into a symbol. Same thing. You hold over all these. Make sure they're selected with this blue here. F8. Let's say Clyde. And then now you can see the whole symbol. Double click. You find the different parts. Want to edit his head? Double click again. You're in the head. Keep double clicking outside of it until you get to the end. Okay, so let's put Clyde into the new animation thing. Paste. And now we just have head Clyde and Clyde jacket. And now we can move him around. Now, best thing to do when you put him in, if he's in parts like this, again, control B or right click and break apart. Alrighty. The other thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to actually create this frame picker thing to have it be super convenient having all these mouths or blinking or poses or whatever else. Uh, this will be the last thing I'm going to show you guys in this tutorial. Uh, this video is getting a bit long and there's a lot to animating specifically and to the rigging and everything that I'm doing right now. So it's best to put in two videos so everything doesn't get all muddled together. I'll put that out in like a couple weeks or so. Alright, so what you want to do is, uh, so you see this symbol here, it only has the one frame and then this symbol here it has all these. What I actually did was I took this. I copied, pasted, and then did the right click and duplicate symbol. So with that, they became different symbols. I made them different names. So this is Shelly Mouth Set 1, and this is Shelly Mouth. So different symbols, need to know that for sure. All right, so uh, what I did was I went into here, double click. This is where the original mouth is. And if you look down at the uh, timeline here, you can see that it has all these different dots here. If you go into the original mouth, it only has one dot. The dot is what's called a keyframe. A keyframe uh, has it to where there's something new on it. So when it comes to animation, like let's say uh, someone appears in one frame and then another person appears in the other or just blinking or some other type of change. The keyframes are when something changes and you can do that by right clicking and saying insert blank keyframe or you can just press F6. That will add another keyframe. It'll copy exactly what you have now and so you can work on editing it from there. The other thing is called a frame. So this is basically when you're extending it. So let's say that uh, that someone is standing on screen, but you want them on there for a few seconds. That's how you extend these. So with that, you say right click insert frame or just F5. So just a quick preview there into how the animating goes as we are putting frames into this. So go back into this. And I did F6 and I had copied and pasted a mouth frame. So do this with the blinking or whatever it is that you want. Uh, what I did was I added the keyframe and it copied this mouth exactly. So then when I uh, pasted this other mouth over it, I was able to see 
the size and make sure that it matched and make sure that it was positioned correctly. That way, uh, whenever they're talking and everything, everything lines up. It's basically the same size and I don't have to worry about like trying to place it different each time because this is the main reason I have the shortcut is to not have to deal with all that. So it's basically how you do that. Do as many frames as needed and if you come up here, you click on it, you go to properties up here, you can actually name it. So I'm going to say right here, enter, and then when I go out of it, click here and it goes to the frame picker. This now says, I mean it still says the one, but this makes it to where if you're not sure on your guide uh, what each of them were supposed to say, then, um, then you can see that, oh yeah, when I pick from this one, it's supposed to be s and this one's supposed to be and stuff like that. So that's another thing you can do there with putting the actual labels on what each of them are. But you, yeah, you have to do that within the, uh, inside the frame like this. So then next one, that can be labeled something else. And you can keep doing it like that. So say eh, enter, get out of there. And when I go back to the frame picker, it's eh now. All right. So, I uh, hope this gives you a good idea on all that you need to do for rigging. There is a whole lot that goes into it, especially if you're doing these South Park animations and not just making like a single character uh, for like an anime or something. Because with anime, you can have the mouth just open and close and have just a couple expression mouths. But with South Park, they enunciate every word. Like, you need to make sure that it looks like the show you need to be having all of these for the lip syncing. Like, you, you could do it different if you'd like to, if you don't want it to be exactly like the show, if you want to get out animations and don't want to do the lip syncing, there's that as well. But, the, uh, the way that it looks like on the show, they definitely put all this work into it. They have all these different eyes, everything like that. You can probably find guides online, got the side mouths, and the good thing is, though, is that they all use these bases. So most of the young kids have this. You can just edit it to be a jacket or anything else. If it has a dress, then yeah, it'd be extended. Just uh, trace it as needed. And then they still use these same types of hands and arms and things like that. And if anything is different, then you're just able to copy it from a reference. That's why rigging and being able to trace these are so nice. You can just use them over and over. And then the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually animate for South Park, the movements, how to do the talking, how to do the audio syncing, tips and tricks that you can do, anything for that that'll make it so you can be a master at animating South Park, and you can apply this to other animations. So, hope this video helped. If you like what you see, please pounce on that subscribe and like button. Bat at the bell if you'd like to get notified every time I do a new tutorial, animation, or whatever else. Have a great day. Keep your claws sharp. Bye!